Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Alertus webinar series. My name is Vincent Busher, Marketing Coordinator at Alertus Technologies. During this presentation, Ryan Kelly will provide insight on the Alertus desktop notification system. In addition, we're excited to have special guest speaker Marge Abels with us as well. Marge is the Emergency Communications Integration Analyst at Indiana University. Today, she will speak on her personal experiences with using the Alertus desktop notification solution at her institution. Thank you again, Marge, for joining us. Now, during the webinar, please feel free to submit your questions at any time, and they will be addressed during the Q&A session at the end of this presentation. This webinar is being recorded and will be shared with you after today's <coughs> session. If you have any questions after this presentation, please email marketing at alertus.com. Now I'd like to turn it over to Ryan. Thanks, Vinny, and thanks everyone for joining today. My name is Ryan Kelly. I am a regional sales manager here at Alertus. Uh, today, what I'd like to do what I'd like to go through is going to be the following options that we're uh, we're going to be addressing. Excuse me. Um, so, for what it's worth, we're going to be talking a little bit about the Alertus system in general. But I'd like to give some background on mass notification and some of the things that you and your organizations are going to be addressing. We're going to go through some challenges that might be addressable with the desktop notification, and then we will address some of the features and functionality that we have with the Alertus desktop. At the end, we'll have a Q&A session, uh, so please feel free to give me a, uh, you know, give us some time to address those questions at the end. But if we don't get to your questions, we'll be able to address them after the webinar. So I'd always like to start off with what Alertus is, who we are, because to understand the desktop notification client and the desktop notification piece of what we're doing, the Alertus system and where we came from is important. Because when it comes down to mass notification and alerting the individuals in your facilities with a desktop notification, um, you know, with desktop notification started when the University of Maryland had a tornado back in 2002. And unfortunately, there's two students that passed away during that incident. During that time, there was actually a, you know, a text and email system at the University of Maryland. And even then, the ability to notify individuals on a facility level and get messages out to your facilities was just as prevalent as it is now. So Alertus has started back in 2002. We've grown leaps and bounds with about 2,000 clients worldwide. We also have clients across every vertical. So obviously Marge in Indiana is gonna speak a little bit on the higher education side, but we'll also have the ability to address some corporate uh, sh uh, struggles, some higher education, healthcare, uh, local government, whatever facility, whatever type of notification you have currently, we'll be able to address to try to tackle any challenge. Um, and realistically, why the desktop notification piece is so important is because there's a lot of challenges that come in, in, come into your facilities and that you'll address with your emergency management team. Multiple buildings throughout your facilities, uh, multiple buildings in your region, different systems to activate. There's a lot of companies, there's a lot of organizations that are already doing different technologies and different uh, mass notification systems to notify their individuals. How can we utilize the desktop notification piece with those? We'll be able to address that. There's also a, a ton of other challenges that we'll be able to address throughout this, this, uh, this presentation today. Um, large employee headcounts, employees moving throughout locations. Um, desktop notification is definitely gonna be a piece that we can fit into any challenge that you have. And at the end of the day, the time that it takes to notify individuals is very imperative. Uh, obviously, there's going to be different systems that you might be familiar with. There's going to be systems that we have internally. Um, but again, the ability to notify people within seconds is going to be crucial. And, and realistically, when it comes to emergency notification and the desktop notification client, it's, it's not just a one tool. Not, it's just not one tool that you want to utilize on its own. Uh, the way we position ourselves in the marketplace and we position ourselves within emergency management organizations is to layer your no notification and layer your approach. So no matter where you're at, whether you're indoors, outdoors, off campus, at home, you can get a notification across your organization. The desktop notification is going to be a great piece to this puzzle with personal notification, notifying individuals with, when they're in that environment. But that's not to say that's the only thing that we do. Um, obviously, that's going to be what we focus on today. But the ability to layer and the areas of, uh, you know, the, the ability to layer your areas of communication across your, your um, organization is just as imperative 
as reaching people on the desktop. Um, so what makes us different here within the uh, mass notification space is uh, going to be kind of ties into what I mentioned at the beginning with the ability to notify people um, in your facilities during an emergency. We want to integrate with the technology that you have. Having the ability to notify people with a message across the desktop, with the desktops that you have, the laptops that they're going to bring onto your facilities is very important. It saves a lot of time. It saves a lot of money. And the ability to integrate with a lot of technology that's in your facilities is the number one thing that we always like to, to balance off. Um, the second thing that I always like to point out, and they're kind of flip-flopped here, is the ability to notify everybody with a single point of activation. So no matter how many endpoints we have, no matter, no matter how many different facilities you have, how many campuses you have, we have the ability to notify everybody from a single point of activation. We'll go through some of the different in integrations that we have, the different systems uh, that we have, have the ability to integrate with. Everybody's going to have different systems and different processes, but the ability to notify everybody within seconds with the desktop notification is going to be critical. And finally, the last thing that we always like to say here at Alertus is we don't just stop there with the ability to integrate the technology that we have. We do have the ability to fill in gaps. We won't necessarily speak on every single product that we have. I do want to showcase some of the different products that we will uh, have future webinars on and, and future uh, conversations with, hopefully. Um, but we do have a broad array of different products that we have the ability to fill in the gaps with, uh, whether that's signage, whether that's the ability to notify people with our alert beacon. Again, this is not going to be the main focus today. The main focus is going to be on the desktop notification. But the main goal that we want to specify with anybody that's t uh, listening in today is the ability to use your, tech, uh, your desktops to notify people is imperative, but you also want to phase different products in. You want to have the ability to work across the board with other technologies, other companies, so you have a unified system that reaches everybody no matter where they're at. So with that said, I want to just quickly just discuss the desktop notification. Um, this is why you're all here today. You want to learn a little bit more about the desktop notification client and the ability to notify people with your computers. What you see here in the middle of your screen is our most standard template. We recently updated our templates, so we'll go through uh, different options that you have within the, within the notification um, console. Um, but the ability to customize these alerts is crucial for our end clients. The ability to brand these alerts to look any way that you like is very important. So we have custom branding and we have customized, customizable features that you'll be able to see where you can tinker and tailor the alert to any type of emergency. As far as the alert goes, you obviously can see in the middle of the screen the ability to customize that message. So whenever the message comes across that individual screen, they'll be able to have instructions or they'll be able to at least know the, the message right away and they can uh, get, get notified. In the middle of the screen, you can hopefully see it. If not, we'll be able to show you some, some uh, pictures maybe after this meeting is an acknowledgement button. We have the ability to acknowledge any alert that's coming through as the end user. So, for example, if there is a weather incident and there is a tornado that's within 25 miles, it's important to let people know that that's happening, but it might just be a watch and they just want to make sure that there is a, you know, an understanding of what's going on. So they acknowledge that button, or I should say they click the acknowledgement button and acknowledge that desktop notification. That desktop notification client will go away and the screen that they are currently on will automatically pop back up. Um, you also have the ability to lock alerts down as well. So, for example, if there's a tornado watch 25 miles out, you want to make sure that they have the ability to acknowledge it. But if it's in, within five miles, we have the ability to lock that screen so nobody can move around, uh, nobody can make sure that they, uh, they get that alert, and they have to take action, and they have to you know, go to uh, the place that they need to go. A couple other features that you'll see here, it's very easy to install, it's very non-invasive, so you have the ability to really uh, customize this within your IT department. Um, we'll, we'll go through some of the server questions maybe at the end. Um, we're also happy to set up a call with any of your team members who are on the IT side, so if you do have any questions on the compatibility within your environment, we're happy to um, address that. You'll see at the bottom as well, auditing. Auditing is very crucial for us. We want to make sure that any, at, at, any, at any given time, you know 
that the desktop notification client is online. Uh, with that being said, you want to make sure that when an alert goes out, you also have the ability to notify people with that acknowledgement, or you should, I, I should say you have the ability to see who acknowledged that, that uh, message as well. We want to know how fast the alert's going out. We want to know how fast the acknowledgement button's being pressed. And we also want to make sure that at any given time, the desktop notification client is up and running. Um, but this is going to be, again, our most popular feature within our system. Uh, we want to make sure that whenever a notification comes across anybody's screen, that they can acknowledge it, they can move on with their day, but also they can take action. I mentioned some other uh, customizable features as well within the system. Um, the ability to notify people with a full screen message, I'd say it's probably the most important thing because it's going to take over their screen. They won't be able to do anything and they'll be able to address these certain uh, the scenarios that you're uh, trying to get out. But I would say the uh, other features that we have include the ability to notify people with a visual message, uh, or I should say a pop-up message in the corner of their screen. We also have the ability to do a ticker mode on the bottom or the top of the screen. So again, I mentioned the, the flexibility, such as a tornado watch. Maybe it's not necessarily a, a threat to that immediate facility at that time. Maybe we'll just do a ticker mode to let them know that the alert is or the incidents within a certain duration of time. Uh, maybe you're on the IT side it's a, and it's an IT outage. You want to let people know that there's going to be a, uh, a, downtime, a downtime later that evening. You can just do a quick quarter screen message to let people know uh, certain options. But again, the ability to customize these features, the ability to customize the message is going to be just as important as making sure it gets out on time. Um, so with that said, I want to just pass the uh, the mic along to Marge here. Uh, Marge is with Indiana University, as Vinny had mentioned at the beginning. Uh, so Marge, we'd uh, we'd love to hear a little bit more about how Indiana University is uh, utilizing the desktop notification client. Thanks, Ryan. Basically, we started with Alertus back when they were I forget what you guys call that now. It's an initiative where we got a free license for Alertus desktop alerts. And we integrated it with, we use RAVE Mobile Safety as our emergency notification system. And we integrated it so it's just another modality, delivery modality uh, within our send process. So it, you know, it, it added quite a bit of, um, I don't know, just another way to reach people. Because quite honestly, if any of you have been doing this for a while, you know that people don't really like to give up their cell numbers or be texted. And, and that's like the text is the fastest way to reach people. And so when we have that, you know, that gap or people say we have a lot of limestone buildings on our campuses, too. So sometimes cell signals don't work very well. So we needed another way to do things in, in the classroom. And quite honestly, I probably shouldn't say this, but we looked at the actual beacons. But when you have 400 buildings at one institution and you have nine of them, um, it's not cost effective to use the beacons in every every location. So desktop was the, the best way to go. and. Um, what I think what is better is that we had a little bit of a concern from our CIO about the generic pop-up alert. He felt very much like it could be malware, and we were trying very hard to get that kind of stuff stopped at our university. So that's when we looked into purchasing alerts, desktop alerts, and it's definitely been worth our money because – when we first started out, I have eight, I told you eight, eight sites, there's nine, but we don't do things at our, med, at our medical um, facility down at Evansville. We don't do desktop stuff. Um, but the other eight, I had to run nine, eight servers and a test server, and people could only get desktop alerts for one campus. Now, I'm a university-wide person, so I get alerts for all eight of our campuses, and I would want a desktop alert for any uh facility that I was actually physically located on. So the best part I think about the purchasing the alerts desktop uh, piece and integrating it with Rave is that now I can do one server and use their feature called IP range, IP ranges. So each campus, you know, we own the network. So we have a, a, a set of IP ranges for each of those sites throughout the state of Indiana. And so if I'm here in, in Bloomington, in southern Indiana, and I travel with my Surface laptop, whatever, to the Indianapolis campus, once I get on that campus, I'm given an IP address for that campus. So interestingly enough, if I'm not someone who gets alerts for eight campuses through RAVE with just text and email and all that, 
if I'm just a person that usually gets Bloomington alerts, but every once in a while I travel to IUPUI, I can get a desktop alert while I'm there, even though I'm not getting the other modality deliveries to me, although we do digital signs and web pages and, and social media and everything uh, as far as deliveries. So the best part, I think, about the purchase version is the ability to brand this. And you can see uh, on this slide, there's a smaller version of our actual screen. And this was all, this all ran through our, you know, through our university security office and uh, the CIO's office to make sure that we feel like the branding worked for us. And if you notice, we, we branded it on the lower left corner with IU Notify emergency notifications. And then the what is this has our copyright information for the trustees. And so that's all, that was the customization of it is, is probably the best part from, from our perspective in that now we know and people know that this came from IU. This didn't, you know, this is some sort of malware or spam or whatever trying to get you to click on dismiss this alert button and then, you know, do something nefarious to you. So, so we're very pleased with the ability to, first of all, I'm pleased with the ability to only have to manage one server in my, in my machine room for, for alerts, desktop alerts. And, uh, you know, the CIO is very pleased with our design and um, everybody's uh, pretty happy with the fact that we allow departments and, and schools to opt into this. Otherwise, they have to down, you know, they have to download the client. However, the university said for all student technology centers, all classrooms and any other desktop available media um, you know, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna force you to be involved involved or and force you to get these alerts. So we do have them in all student technology centers, and I'm looking very for I'm looking forward to the new release that will allow me to do it even if nobody signed on to that machine, because we found that sometimes in the student technology centers, there there might not be anybody in there but the person working on it, and you know he's not necessarily going to get it if he's not signed on to a machine. So we kind of like the idea that we can light them all up at once even if nobody's in the room. Um, or signed onto the machine, so so I'm looking forward to that new feature too. Um, yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say we're looking forward to that new feature as well. It's actually coming out um, very shortly, and we'll actually be addressing that on the uh, the next few slides here. Um, but if you have uh, no other uh, comments, there, Marge, we'll uh, we'll let you get going, and we'll continue on. Thank you so much. Okay. And just know that you can share my information with anybody who'd like to get more information about, you know, how we rolled it out or anything like that. I'm happy to share with folks. Yeah, that sounds great. We'll be doing a follow-up after this webinar. So anybody who wants to reach out to Marge or talk to her one-on-one, -on -one, we'll be providing that information after the webinar. Thanks again. All right. Thank you. No problem. Yep. And it's a, it's a good segue into what IU is doing because we do have the ability to template and customize these alerts any way you like. Um, you know, again, you have the ability to utilize our own templates. I, I know I mentioned that in the beginning with our, our first pop-up there, the full screen takeover, but really how you and your organization are going to be branding this and going to be utilizing the different um, features is just as important for your, your university or your facility as, you know, as Indiana or any other organization. So the alerts can look any way that you like. We have the ability to embed pictures, embed sound, embed video feeds. Uh, you can also, as you see here, uh, if you have some coding experience, you have the ability to create your own alert and look any way that you like. Um, you can see some other alerts here. Um, obviously, these are going to be pretty pretty similar in size and, and similar um, in uh, in description. But again, you want to be able to alert people, but you also want to be able to provide instructions and allow people to you know get direction from from your emergency staff. Um, but with that said, I, I do want to go through some additional features that we provide because I think with the desktop notification client itself, it's very uh, it's very self-explanatory. It sits in the background and, you know, has the ability to be, you know, pushed out to any client, you know, from one server, as Marge had mentioned. Uh, but the ability to notify people from other avenues is also crucial. So we have our own console, and we're happy to walk through uh, the console with anybody at any given time to understand the flexibility there. But you'll see here, we also have some other features with the ability to activate the system, which I think are very important because, um, you know, coming from my side and being on the sales side is from like the higher education and the commercial side. 
I think the weather alerting, I should say the bottom there, the threat watcher, the ability to tie into weather alerts is one of the most crucial and requested features from our system. So the ability to tie into weather alerts, whether it's NOAA, whether it's uh, AccuWeather or another, you know, other feeds that you and your organization might be monitoring at this time, having the ability to activate the alerts and activate the desktop from those weather feeds is, is going to be important with the ability to get that alert out in a timely manner. Another feature that I always like to talk about as well is our map interface. So again, Indiana University, eight campuses spread out. Not everybody should receive the same notification every single time, uh, especially when there's going to be certain instances that are going to be just applicable to a specific location or a specific campus. So another feature that we have within our system is the ability to map out and target certain modalities and certain, uh, I should say, target certain desktops with, within your campuses or within your environments. So whether you're a Fortune 500 company that has locations all over, or whether you are a school that has multiple locations or even multiple buildings, we have the ability to target each of those buildings or each of those locations uh, with a map interface, but again, with the ability to target weather for those specific locations as well, because you want to make sure that it's all tied together and you don't have to do three things at once. Some other things that we have the ability to do as well, I mentioned this at the beginning and Marge mentioned it with Rave Mobile, is the ability to integrate with other systems. We're not, we're not, um, we're aware that, that we're not going to be the only system a lot of times within a university or an organization. There's many organizations out there that do an awesome job with texting, emailing, calling services, or a number of other features. We have the ability and we've set up some partnerships in the past that allow us to utilize these integrations to activate our system um, in real time. So just as I mentioned in the previous slide with being able to automate weather alerts or being able to activate the system from our user console, keep using that console that you're using within your text and email system, whether that's Rave, whether that's Everbridge, Regroup, Motorola, there's a, there's a lot of different organizations out there that are doing a great job with texting and emailing. Being able to initiate those alerts from those consoles is going to save a lot of time. And it goes back to that one of my first points is with a single point of activation. Being able to activate the system within seconds, being able to utilize everything together rather than separating out all these different uh, modalities and all these separate uh, systems, you can synchronize everything. And our integrations are, uh, are set up that way. Another thing that I wanted to mention as well, and Marge kind of hinted at it is, is on, on her little uh, on her uh, conversation there, um, is the ability to activate the system from a login screen. So previously, one of the, the latest updates that we had was the ability to override a lock screen. So if I'm coming in in the morning, I log in, I go, uh, go get some water, and I come back to my screen, and my, my screen is locked, we would have the ability to override that lock screen. What we're currently working on and what is actually being released uh, in our next, um, our next summer release coming out in the next month is the ability to take over a logged off screen. So just as Marge mentioned, you walk into a uh, computer center. I remember when I was a student, I walked into the library and all these computers had the login screen right there. We can utilize these features that from the desktop notification to override that log screen. So anybody that's coming in, hasn't logged in in the morning, they sit down and get their coffee, that notification will automatically pop up. The only caveat I will mention though, is currently that is only a Windows-based uh, client. If um, you have Macs, we can override the locked out screen, but if you have not logged on, uh, we cannot override the logged off screen from a Mac yet. Uh, that is coming hopefully down the road, but just a, uh, a quick caveat with that integration and that uh, feature. Um, and just what it would look like. Another thing is when you were logging in, um, you know, you have the, again, the flexibility to do the pop up as well as the ticker mode there. Um, so we're, we're also aware that there's a lot of organizations out there, especially our K through 12 market where the desktop notification wasn't necessarily the most applicable uh, feature. We were talking to a lot of schools in the past where you know, we have a lot of Chromebooks. We have organizations that are giving out laptops to their their um, their their students or their employees. Um, so Chromebook notification is just as important for us with a lot of our uh, with a lot of our clients, especially in the K through 12 market. 
because we don't have a current uh, integration with Chrome, but we do have the ability to tie in a, with the Google Chrome application a push notification to their, uh, their system. I'm going to briefly walk through the server requirements, or I should say how the system is operational um, in the next couple slides. Uh, but as the system is a pull methodology for the desktop notification, the Chromebook is actually a push. So the way you would log into Chrome now, if I'm on a web page and I have the ability to click and accept notifications, that's all we're looking for. Any organization that hands out these Chromebooks to so their students should already have that feature selected. And then anytime a notification is sent out, it will pop up in the middle of their screen, or I should say it will pop up in the corner of their screen so that individual with that Chromebook can still receive that notification. Um, so again, it's not going to be the same functionality and the same feature level that we have with our desktop clients uh, with Apple as well as, um, as well as Windows, but you still receive that non-invasive alert uh, that will pop up in the corner of the screen for your Chromebooks. So as we go forward, uh, I know that hopefully everybody that's listening to this wants to buy right now. I don't blame you. Um, but one of the things that we do realize here at Alertus is not everybody's ready to buy right this second. Um, one of the things that we've really worked on in the past, uh, you know, since I've been here the last four years, and especially with the, uh, the, educa the education clients that we work with and our nonprofits, is the ability to work with them on a level of notifying their individuals with no cost. And we actually have a free version of our desktop notification client. We call it our desktop uh, donation initiative. And I think it used to be called our desktop grant, uh, probably something that Marge might have been familiar with. Um, but what you get with our desktop notification, um, desktop donation, I should say, is the ability to push a, uh, an alert out to a full screen in any given facility. So you get a lot of the same features and functionality with the ability to group these alerts, send them out to any location, uh, send them out to any IP address that's in your network. The only caveat here is it is a full screen alert. The ability to customize the colors, the ability to customize the notification to look, uh, the look and feel like a Indiana University or your organization alert, that functionality unfortunately is not available with the free version. However, it's still a free version. You have unlimited licensing with this and you do have the ability to, again, push this out to any, uh, any desktop client within your your organization. However, if you are ready to hop on, uh, hop on board and look at some of the other functionality and features that we have, um, we do have an annual license and service agreement. Um, this does get you a little bit more um, functionality with the other stuff that we do, digital signage, panic buttons, the ability to target the weather alerts, uh, but it does get you that, that capability to customize the alerts as well. So again, the ticker mode, the quarter screen mode, those are then applicable. Or, or I should say those are applied to this, this feature. Um, and you do have the ability to uh, customize these alerts to look and feel any way that you like. So finally, I hinted at this in the last slide. We're not gonna get too technical. I'm on the sales side. I don't really have a lot of IT background, uh, but I do my best. Everything that we do though is a server-based system. Uh, as Marge said, the beauty of this is to have everything centralized on one server. That is crucial for us. It saves a lot of time. It saves a lot of energy for your individuals. Uh, when these alerts are sent out, whether through you know weather, panic buttons, your existing notification system that you're doing, everything is then connected to our server and our system. And when I say our server, this is not a web, um, a uh, SaaS company. We are a uh, you, we would be utilizing a virtual environment or a dedicated on-premise server in your environment that you would be managing. Um, when that server is then up and running, we provide the software and the client configuration to then have you have the ability to download and broadcast these messages out to all those desktops. So we do have a lot of different functionality within the system um, to navigate different groups, uh, different IP ranges, the ability to act, uh, uh, tie into Active Directory or LDAP integration. Um, but at the end of the day, there, we don't really care on our end how you notify people, or I should say how you choose to um, notify people, whether it's with a panic button or your existing system. We just want to make sure that you're aware that all these systems are going to be integrated from a centralized server that allows you to communicate those options out. So uh, that's going to be most of uh, 
most of the uh, functionality for the desktop notification. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, you know, we do have a lot of other functionality and a lot of features within the Alertis system. Desktop notification is a very crucial part of that, that, uh, that puzzle. Um, as we go forward into the Q&A, uh, please let us know if we missed anything or if you have any questions on any specific uh, needs for your environment. Um, if there's anything else that we can help you with down the road, we will be doing future webinars on other products. Um, I'm available to talk to anybody about specific products, but I'm also helpful um, for any desktop notification questions uh, as well. Um, so with that said, um, we'll, uh, we'll relay it back to Vinny here and let us know if you have any questions. Thank you, Ryan, and a special thanks to Marge for joining us today. We're now beginning the Q&A session of our presentation. If you have a question, please submit uh, them through the chat or question box. Please note, if we do not get to your question during this session, our representative will reach out to answer your question directly. A recording of this webinar will also be shared with you after today's presentation. Now let's begin with our first question. How does Alertus desktop notification target its audience that will receive an alert? Yeah, that's a great question. So Marge hinted at that as well with the ability to tie into different IP ranges. So that is definitely one of the most common types and avenues that we utilize to target different uh, different groups. We, but as I mentioned in the, uh, the previous slide, we also have the ability to target people with Active Directory um, and LDAP integration. So however your organization is set up, we want to make sure that we can set up the desktop notification client in the same type of way. Here's the next question. How do weather alerts work? Are we watching the weather and posting alerts or is that an automatic from some weather service? Yeah, so we don't monitor the weather ourselves. We're not reinventing the wheel and trying to notify people with weather alerts from our own platform. Uh, we're actually tying in different feeds from the most popular weather services out there. So NOAA National Weather Service is a very popular one. AccuWeather is another one. If there's another weather feed or another weather organization that you utilize in your organization, all we're really doing is taking a feed from there and tying that into an event trigger into the Alertus system. Um, so typically it's a cat feed, but again, we'll try our best with different organizations to create APIs or other types of feeds to notify people automatically with weather alerts. If students on campus are at a desktop computer, how do we ensure there won't be any false alarms or pranks by students? Yeah, so the system is managed internally with your, uh, your, with your organization security group or emergency notification group. Um, the desktop notification client is pushed out to all these computers and you have the ability to decide which computers or which clients get notified and which ones don't. Um, as far as security goes, we have user rights and user access. Uh, so if, for example, Marge and her team have the ability to notify people, nobody can really go into the desktop client and change the settings, only they will be able to do that. Um, with that in mind, you do have the ability, especially our larger organizations where there's multiple groups or multiple um, multiple areas of the, the region or country where you want different people to have different access rights. We most certainly can do that. Anybody in the system has the ability to provide access rights or limitations to uh, their specific organization. Here's our next question. If we already have a mass notification system and use Alertus as an add-on feature, which system will we use to activate an alert? Yeah, and that really depends on how you want to you know, utilize the system. We are, again, I, I, we're very aware that there's a lot of companies out there that are doing text and email and they might be embedded in your system already. If you're comfortable with that integration, or I should say if you're comfortable with that interface, that is okay with us. We'll set up our, our uh, integration to allow um, our organization, our, our software and our server to communicate back. Uh, but we definitely have some products and we definitely have uh, the ability to notify people from our system as well. Uh, many organizations enjoy the panic button features that we have that can tie back into our server, but then also target the text and email uh, recipients as well. Here's our next question. What is required to connect the desktop notification with poll stations, panic buttons, et cetera? Is there an integration device or multiple devices used? Yeah, the pool stations and the panic buttons can vary. We have, we obviously will probably have some other webinars that we can address this a little bit more fluidly or a little bit more in depth. The panic buttons can range from IP buttons that are on your computer that target, um, that can be targeted from a desktop 
We also have panic buttons that can be wall mounted that sit on the desk, or I should say sit on the wall in a security department. Um, so it really ranges. We have different mechanisms with contact closures, but also just the software integrations that we've set up that allow us to communicate everything back to the main server. So again, whether it's a panic button that's on the wall with a contact closure into a, a specific IP device, or whether it's a existing computer, we have different mechanisms there. Here's the next question. Does the Alertus desktop notification client offer audible functions such as alert tones or text-to-speech? Yes, so both desktop, or I should say, sorry, both Windows and Mac allow us to utilize WAV files uh, to notify people from uh, the computer. So you can do a WAV file with a pre-recorded message, you can do a video, you can do buzz files, or both Windows and Mac provide text-to-speech functionality as well. All right, here's our last question. Do you have integrations with text and email systems? Yep. Yep, so uh, as we mentioned, we have a lot of different systems that we've worked with in the past. I'd say Rave, Everbridge, Regroup, uh, Motorola Vesta, OnSolve, which is kind of formed into a bunch of different, or formed from a bunch of different companies such as SendWord Now or Code Red. Um, these are all names. Blackboard, uh, there's a lot of different systems out there. If we didn't name one that you use, just let us know. Uh, typically, we can tie into it. Um, if we don't have an API set up, we're always looking at new integrations, so just let us know. All right, thanks, Ryan. We have now concluded the Q&A session of our presentation. Again, if we did not get to your question, we will reach out to you directly with an answer. If you have any questions or need additional information, please feel free to email marketingandalertus.com, and we'll be happy to assist you. If you're looking for more information on Alertus and our solutions, visit our website at alertus.com. If you're interested in upcoming webinars, please see our site alertus.com slash webinars to see the full schedule. Thank you for joining today's webinar and we look forward to meeting with you again soon.